Hi everybody, welcome to another career tutorial. I'm Crichton. What we're going to do this time through is we're going to look at bump mapping, but we're going to do it. We're, before we do that, let me show you a little little something. Uh, I did uh, some tutorials way when I first started doing doing the tutorials, and uh, I had noticed that uh, when we made our little display case, everything always came in backwards, and I'm like, what's going on? I don't understand it. Well, that's because we're doing this on the inside of a cube. Everything is mapped on the outside of it uh, initially. So if you have your um, square, if you have your everything's box faced and and uh, all that, uh, it'll map on there correctly. See that? Uh, if it's on the outside. But it's on the inside, and it looks like, and and for some reason, it's doing this like this. Uh, but in this side, it's not. So what you need to do is you need to go to Model, Reverse Polygons Normal, and it doesn't show that it's done anything here. But now, if you reverse your normals, then your outside is now your inside. Okay. All right. Now uh, let's do the bump mapping part of this. Now that, that's important because your bumps will bump will uh, be bumpy uh, one way and if you reverse your polygons normal they're not going to be the way that you expect them. Let's go ahead and drop our brick texture in here. Another call back to a different tutorial and let's jump in here so we can see the updates. One Mississippi and see this uh, we have a simple 4x8 configuration of bricks and I threw some squares in there with everything's pretty much default with another 4x8 you know, except for that 4x8 uh, configuration there too. Got a little bump on there. Just bump, not displacement mapping, just a bump of some turbulence just to make it kind of look cool. Now, let's go over here. Oh, let's go over here and let's uh, copy at the multiply point. Copy. We're going to copy our brick and squares and we're going to throw them in our displacement mapping. Paste. Jump over here. And if you've ever messed with displacement mapping, uh, you'll notice that there are constant updates and you're wondering why is my machine slowing down so much? It's because initially enable displacement is checked. Keep that unchecked where, whenever you can and only check it to check your stuff. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, with enable displacement disabled, you can drag your stuff up and down with no repercussions. I think the rendering process is kind of slowing this down a little bit. But see, nothing happens. And you can sit there and that's very cool. Now I'm going to show you a little something here. Let's go 10, 1, 2, 3, and do our adapt. Oh, before that, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, enable displacement mapping is, uh, if you have that disabled, uh, your minimum sample count can go up to a million just so you know your extra adaptive steps can go up to 10 so between the two of them your minimum sample count subdivides your your um, polygons uh, I think up to a million and your extra adaptive steps can go to 10 so that would be 10 million if it was just that but your extra adaptive steps can add up to four times more triangles yeah, it triangulates your it triangulates your uh, mesh. So four times a million is uh, four million times ten. That's forty million. That's forty million potential polygons in your mesh. Now, if you've got the time and the patience to do that, cool. Uh, more power to you. But for those of us that have other things to do, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, try this little trick. Let's go 10,000 and let's bring it down to 2. And our amplitude, we're going to do the default value at 8. And our smoothing angle is 45. And our offset should be 1. Okay. Now, uh, before, and we have. Something else too. You're displacing 3D view. Uh, this is kind of important too. It, it's going to add a little bit of render time, but let me show you a little thing here. 
Now this isn't a now this is a, a slow process right here, but if I would have cranked this up a little bit, it would have made it even more of that. And check it out. See how everything is all bumpy and nice and cool? And look at this. If you displaced in 3D view, it's bumpy and nice and cool here too. And now you can you can maneuver your stuff around and uh, and get your lighting right and all that without a whole bunch of updates. Very important. Very important. Oh. Very important that uh, that this thing is checked and unchecked. To, it'll save you time. Believe me, it saves a lot of time. Now let's disable it while we do some adjustments here. Let's make our amplitude 0 0.02. And our smoothing angle is going to be 90. And our offset is going to be 0.25. Ready? Before. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. And look at that. See that? Yeah, it's probably better if we do it like this. We can see that everything's all bumpy and nice and good. And you really can't tell that much. If you, if you can't really can't tell that much, but you can see that there's little uh, triangulated polygons added to our mesh. And you notice that helps it kind of smooth it out with the bumpiness on there that kind of camouflages this. See that? So anyway, that's kind of cool. This is all this is all very cool. But um, what's it good for? Can you can you export it to other programs? Can you throw it into Poser or Daz Studio? Yes, you can. Let's take a look at it because it is pretty pretty. And let's uh, slide this to the side. Oh, actually, let's export it. Or yeah, export it. We're going to save it as a wavefront object. We're call, going to call this one, two, three, wall. We're going to save it. And all our default values are good. Just push OK. And you're waiting for something to happen. It's already happened. It exported this simple mesh uh, in just a split second. But check this out. Let's import our one two three wall object uh -oh. Oh, before we do that let's do that again import our wall one two three object and it's 4.2 megabytes this this object exported at 4.2 megabytes and I'm getting ready to show you why let's open and wavefront object default values are good and if we had subdivided that anymore, this process would be taking a lot longer. But as it turns out, it just took that long. And see how small it is compared to the other thing? Let's go ahead and size that up. T. And yeah, we exported our displacement map. And it came and it's not, it was a mesh. So that's pretty cool. Let's look at what it looks like. See that? everything's displaced everything's exactly the way you want it to be which is very nice and good and cool see that see how the shadows are doing it but you see the polygons right there and let me show you something else too this thing is 4.2 million, uh, 4 million polygon or megs this is why this is what your mesh looks like after you've exported it and imported it back in make note of the amount of polygons in here if you have a slow system and uh, anyway this is really going to you know chug things down a little bit and the reverse normal thing uh, see that see how the the mesh has been bent in if uh, the the normals were reversed it would be would have been reversed on your displacement mapping or if it would have been reversed initially, uh, you'd, your bumps would be going the other way. Sorry, spazzy. All right, this is our thing before. And remember this little guy right here? Let's go ahead and bring that in here. Ah, uh, no! Disable displacement mapping. I cannot stress that enough. 
and disable this. And I was just going to show you a one-shot deal. Ooh, wow, that's really cool. But it is really cool because the texture that you made, you can apply to the mesh that you just brought in. Cool, right? Now, and you can also save this. You want to save it with the uh, displacement mapping and all that, you can do that too. But that's your displacement mapping. It doesn't just work on bricks, it works on every single grayscale element in your scene. All right, and uh, that's just for this part of it. Displacement mapping, there's displacement mapping in our, in the modeling process. Uh, displacement mapping's in a lot of different places in here, and it's becoming a good way to uh, help us non-modelers model. Anyway, uh, that's your displacement mapping, and that's it for this time. I'm Kreitman, and I'll talk to you again later.